I'm Paul Huizinga, I'm bringing you all the stuff that's cool and new here at PRI, and I've got Mike from Superflow, and we're talking about all the new stuff that they've got for their dynos. Now, one of the really cool things that I'm seeing here is you've got new electronics and software that allow guys who have got your existing systems to upgrade them. Yeah, so a couple of things on the software. Um, we're releasing Windyne 4, or debuting Windyne 4, which is our new software uh, here at PRI. It'll be available uh, early first quarter 2017. Well, the plan is early first quarter. We're targeting first quarter 2017. Um, beta testing it now, and that's going well, but uh, you know, we've got some of our high-end users uh, finding bugs. You know, we can't, we can't think of all the possible use cases and can't test that all, so we've got uh, quite a few beta sites out there helping us uh, work the kinks out, and quarter one next year will be uh, shooting to get that out in the rest of the market's hands. And then along those lines that uh, we were talking about upgrades, um, Windyne is a data acquisition and control system for any dynamometer. So it can be fit onto older Superflow dynos, DTS dynos, other manufacturers' dynos, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's a water break, an eddy current, or an AC system, you know, Windyne is a, is a plug and play um, data acquisition and control system built for dynamometer testing. Now, I know that a lot of guys have had your dynos that they've had in operation for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. This allows them to bring their, uh, bring their whole setup basically into the 21st century. Yeah, so like at 901, for example, the electronics on that were produced in the late, or developed in the late 70s. You can't buy them anymore. You think how fast electronics uh, evolve and are obsoleted. It's almost monthly at this rate. You know, it seems like with our phones and things like that. Uh, in the dynamometer world, we're a little bit more lucky because uh, we've been able to make them last for 20, sometimes 30 years. Um, but the mechanical components don't wear out, right? And if they do, we can service them. We can replace bearings, we can replace seals, we can put new castings in a dynamometer. Uh, the electronics, on the other hand, get tired, and when they break, we we can't always get the parts anymore to replace some of the older power mark dynos, some of the older 901s. So we've developed packages uh, to upgrade, you know, plug and play, um, upgrade a 901, upgrade an old power mark, and upgrade, you know, just about any other dynamo dynamometer out there as well. Well, that's great for somebody too who's uh, trying to decide on what dyno they want to buy today. What is going to be future proof? And you really have a history of making future proof dynos. Well, that's the goal. I mean, unfortunately for us, the equipment lasts a long time, you know. Um, <laughs> so the relationship changes from a sales to an ongoing, you know, it's a client relationship. So then we're there to support and, uh, and assist as we can, help them with their testing. But to your point about uh, future proofing, you know, that, that electronics I'm talking about in that upgrade package is the same that you s see on the floor for our new dynamometers that are here at the show today. So from that perspective, once we upgrade the system, uh, it's really no different than what you'd buy if it was a new 902, a new power mark, or an eddy current system, whatever it may be from us, it'd be all the same. Let's talk about some of the hardware we're seeing. What, tell me about this drive shaft. I don't think I've ever seen this before. So the uh, power mark and the Black Widow are both drive shaft driven dynamometers, so the crank connects to the front of the dyno with the drive shaft. Um, we take a few extra steps there to make sure we have a really clean torque signal to the load cell. So that drive shaft is torsionally compliant, meaning it's a large outer tube and a smaller inner tube isolated from each other with rubber. And what that does, it absorbs the uh, torsional vibrations that are transferred out of the engine, either through the crank or through the block, uh, and pre prevents them from reaching the load cell, which uh, adds noise that we just don't need on the load cell. So it works on the same kind of physical principle that a harmonic balancer would yeah, it's the same idea. And then the, some additional improvements that we've done to it, uh, we went from straight, plant, straight splines to involute splines. So we have a uh, higher load capacity on the splines. We have a more consistent load across the depth of the spline versus uh, when straight splines load, they can kind of uh, put all the load on one point inside the spline. Now here's something else that's unusual about this. It's got a CV joint on the end. Yeah, so we take a few extra steps on the connection between the crank and the front of the dyno as well. And we use a CV joint, like you said, on both ends of that drive shaft. And the CV joint gives us a really smooth transfer of torque back to the load cell. Again, we just talked about keeping the load cell signal clean. Uh, we have a built-in nice drive shaft to do that, and a CV joint uh, is the next step of that. If you use a U-joint drive shaft, for example, every time that U-joint rolls over, it spikes a load cell. And there's just no reason to put that noise there. We don't need it, so we use a CV joint and uh, still maintain a nice clean signal. Well, I like that you're doing the extra, the extra things that are necessary to get the best possible data. Now, there's one more piece of hardware here that we haven't talked about yet. Step me through that. So the 902 um, does not have starters on it. We have an optional starter system called the Super Starter, and we're releasing Super Start 2, uh, which is uh, an evolution of the previous version. 
Um, it's a new billet housing design. Uh, it's a solid one-piece shaft with carrier bearings on both ends of the shafts. And it's also got a really trick uh, optional rear-mounted pump drive system. So let's say you've got a sprint car fuel pump that drives off the cam, or maybe a late model oil pump that you want to run uh, off the dynamometer somewhere out of the way so it's easy to uh, work on in your test cell. You don't have to worry about mounting and unmounting those every time. It stays bolted to the dyno. Uh, starter starts the dyno. It's nice and clean, easy to use. And you can change pulleys on this so if you've got an accessory that wants to run at crank speed or at cam speed, no problem there? Yep, it's a different pulley and um, some bracketry to accommodate a different pump or whatever the you know device may be, but yep, straightforward. Well, clearly we haven't had time to cover half of what's new. Where can people go to find out all the information about Superflow? Well, the best place to start would be our website, superflow.com, and uh, we always love chatting on the phone, 800-471-7701. Well, Mike, thank you so much for your time. Keep it right here. We have a whole bunch more stuff coming at you from PRI.